Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. In this video, we are going to review the Sony A9 Master Series OLED TV, which is also marketed as the Bravia A9S in the USA. It only comes in one screen size of 48 inches, and so it's the smallest OLED within the Japanese brand's 2020 TV lineup. The Sony A9 is designated as a Master Series TV, a prestigious branding bestowed upon the best TV within each size class. In other words, Sony thinks that the Bravia 48A9 is its best television under 50 inches in screen size, which we of course fully agree with, primarily due to OLED's superior picture quality. The design is reminiscent of the company's AG9 or A9G introduced last year, with the ultra-slim OLED panel sitting on a low-profile aluminum stand that leaves no room to accommodate the height of any soundbar at all. According to Sony, this minimalistic design is for a good reason. Viewers who buy a 48-inch OLED instead of a 55-inch one are more likely to have done so because of space constraints, and logically it follows that an external soundbar probably wouldn't be appealing to this demographic segment. With this in mind, the acoustic surface audio on the Sony A9 makes perfect sense. Helped by twin actuators and a subwoofer, the OLED screen itself acts as a large slab of forward-facing speakers, obviating the need to build additional speakers into the television. We were impressed by the tonally melodic vocals and crystal clear transients, although we had to bump the volume above 30 to open up the soundstage. The bass was clean, if lacking in oomph, despite adjusting the equalizer, and going through the acoustic calibration procedure using the microphone on the remote control. Talking of which, the remote bundle with the Bravia A9 or A9S is Sony's premium remote, but not the backlit version, which is slightly disappointing for a Master Series TV. The connections are found on the left rear of the display, including four HDMI 2.0b ports whose only HDMI 2.1 features is EARC or Enhanced Audio Return Channel on HDMI 3. Like all recent Sony TVs with X1 Ultimate chipset, the A9 or A9S is equipped with an MT5893 SOC from MediaTek and 2.5GB of RAM. It runs on Android TV Pi 9.0, which operates smoothly and responsively through its user interface, granting access to all the key streaming apps of Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, and Disney+. Before I proceed to talk about picture quality, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crampdale More Leads for sponsoring this video. I have worked closely with them on various projects, including our recent TV shootout, and I found the staff's knowledge of the products they sell to be excellent. They will give you unbiased, independent advice for your purchase. So if you are getting a new television, even if it's not the Sony A9 OLED, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 Mention HDTV Test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. The Sony A9 or A9S uses a 2020 WRGB OLED panel from LG Display. All OLED TVs are capable of true blacks due to the technology's self-emissive nature, so we normally focus our attention on near-black handling in our reviews. The Sony A9 didn't seem to employ any additional measures to mitigate near-black chrominance overshoot beyond the TV's native superior gradation and LG Display's 2020 T-Con, leading to visible flashing artifacts not only on test patterns, but also in certain heavily compressed real-world broadcast material. Interestingly, engaging smooth gradation produced a calmer picture with less chrominance overshoot, probably because the brightness steps in near-black regions were reduced by the decontouring filter. Otherwise, Sony's gamma curve coming out of black was optimized to be tapered rather than a flat 2.4 gamma, which is not as accurate, but produces cleaner near-blacks with less macro-blocking artifacts. Color accuracy was excellent after calibration using the Kalman for Bravia app, with average delta error of less than 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart, where 140 patches were measured, and no inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3, translating to very natural and cinematic colors including skin tones in real-world content. Once in a blue mood, when switching between content with different resolutions and frame rates, which happens quite often when testing her TV, 
We caught our Sony A9 review sample adopting a cooler color temperature with motion interpolation enabled, even though the picture settings remain unchanged in the user menu, requiring us to go into the picture menu to restore an accurate image. With all motion settings disabled, the Sony A9 was able to reproduce 24 frames per second films smoothly without any sign of telecinic judder. With motion flow off, motion resolution came in at the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines. Engaging smoothness would apply frame interpolation, bumping motion resolution to 650 lines. Enabling clearness would activate 120Hz black frame insertion or BFI, further increasing motion resolution to 900 lines when used in combination with motion interpolation. Clearness max is the old 60Hz BFI from previous Sony OLEDs without X motion clarity, which was too dark and flickery to be of use. Even though we have repeatedly championed Sony TVs as far as motion processing is concerned, there is still room for improvements in terms of motion settings implementation. 1. The smoothness settings on Sony TVs including the A9 does not differentiate between low frame rate and high frame rate content, so if you wish to engage motion compensated frame interpolation or MCFI to reduce motion blur when watching sports, unfortunately, you would also incur SOE or soap opera effect for 24 frames per second movies. 2. The default motion flow and film mode settings would introduce the occasional stuttering and tearing in 50Hz broadcast programs with mixed edits, requiring users to switch off either film mode or motion flow to eradicate these artifacts. Similar to what we have seen on other Sony televisions with the X1 Ultimate chipset, Upscaling was first class on the Bravia A9 or A9S, retrieving clean and sharp detail from this SMPT RP133 test card in 576i, without junk pixels and only minimal overshoot. Although it can be argued that upconversion of even grubby standard def channels isn't as demanding on a small screen compared to a 65 inch OLED. The Sony A9 correctly detected and processed 32 and 22 cadences with film mode engaged, but as mentioned earlier, it may interact with the motion flow settings, leading to intermittent stutter in mixed edits. On this 1080p test pattern from the Spears and Munsil HD benchmark disc, the Sony Bravia A9 was able to reproduce full chroma bandwidth once game or graphics mode was engaged. Sony's smooth gradation decontouring filter remained the class leader despite its rivals introducing similar functions in recent years, working effectively to reduce posterization in bit staffed content. Although, as always, moderation is key, otherwise you will risk erasing tons of fine detail along the way. Bright uniformity was excellent on our review unit, exhibiting no dirty screen effect or DSE, bending or color tinting on full field gray slides. Dark uniformity was also one of the cleaner ones we've seen, with minimal thin vertical streaks and only some darkening along the sides and bottom. Note that these non-homogeneity issues were exaggerated by our camera. We were not bothered by them at all in real-world actual viewing. For HDR, peak brightness measured 600 nits on a Tempest window after calibration to D65 white point and 130 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 97% UV, while Rectic 20 coverage was 74%, with the spectral power distribution showing a waveform typical of white OLED with color filter. Thanks to OLED's pixel-level light control, HDR movies looked supremely refined, with no blooming or hallowing artifacts, although bright scenes would appear less impactful than high-nit LED LCDs due to ABL restrictions. Consistent with Sony's philosophy to prioritize maintaining average picture level or APL over preserving all specular highlight detail, the Bravia A9 clipped some of the brightest detail in 4000 nit content, for example around the sun and clouds in pan. Sony's native gradation was already the best among all TV brands across a variety of HDR movies, and engaging smooth gradation drove home the advantage even more. Like all Sony televisions except the XH90 or X900H after a firmware update, the Bravia A9 or A9S supports the source-led or player-led variant of Dolby Vision, which we don't think is as good as the TV-led Dolby Vision universally adopted by other manufacturers. 
there remain some near-black posterization in certain Dolby Vision shows on Netflix. But to be honest, we are seeing more and more compression artifacts even on TV-led Dolby Vision TVs due to Netflix tweaking its streaming bit rates. So we don't think the Sony A9 is doing particularly bad there. With game mode selected, input lag measured 18 milliseconds on a 4K 60Hz video signal, dropping to 10 milliseconds on a 1080p 120Hz video signal. There is no ALM or VRR support, and the TV's HDMI 2.0 bandwidth limitation of 18 gigabits per second meant that the highest resolution that could be sent out by the PS5 to the A9 was 4K 60Hz at 12-bit 422. But at least once auto picture mode was engaged, the TV would automatically switch to game mode when on the PS5, cleverly reverting to another more accurate picture preset when you start playing a movie. To sum up, the Sony A9 is very similar to the A8 in terms of picture quality, only in a smaller form factor. Sometimes, you don't need to be big to be good. Its main rival is the LG 48-inch CX or C10 OLED, which is around £200 cheaper at the time we filmed this video in November 2020. While the LG CX offers better HDMI 2.1 gaming features and superior Dolby Vision, the Sony A9 has the upper hand in motion and video processing, it is undoubtedly the best TV under 50 inches that Sony has ever made, making the Bravia A9 a worthy recipient of our highly recommended award. If you wish to watch our other technical TV reviews, I've created a playlist here, and for our technical TV comparisons, please click on the playlist here, and I'll see you in the next video.